and it's a new coach, new quarterback, new conference for the Ithaca Bombers. Jackson, why don't we go into detail about those changes? Well, Ithaca, of course, as we all know, uh, retiring Mike, Mike Welch, excuse me, after 23 seasons at the helm of this program, bringing in Dan Swanstrom, who was at Penn for the last two years, and then John Hop Johns Hopkins, excuse me, before that as a quarterback coach. Um, interesting tidbit about him, he coached Andrew Luck in high school. Luck now, of course, all NFL fans know he is the uh, starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. So Swanstrom's here, Tyler Johnson, the quarterback of the last four years at Alfred before graduating last year, is now here on the defensive line. So it should be interesting to see what happens. A new coaching staff for Ithaca entirely. Alfred graduating eight guys on the offense last year, eight guys on defense. So um, changes all around on both sides of the ball for both teams. Yeah, when you look at Alfred, they were undefeated last year, the only Empire 8 team ever to go undefeated. They made it the Elite Eight, but you look at the rankings now, they're 21st in the nation, and those graduating seniors, probably the reason for that. Um, but as for Ithaca, they have Adam Fran at quarterback. Why don't you talk about him a little? Well, Adam Fran, as we all know, um, he was the backup quarterback to Wolfgang Schaefer last year. Got a, got a couple of good throws in. He got a touchdown on the season. But what I would look for here for Fran is just a little bit con of consistency out of the gate. We didn't really see that last year. If there's something to take away here, you know, even if we're talking about the, 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 the dinks and dunks over the middle, the five-yard, seven-yard passes, you know, that's what you want to see from Fran out of the gate. This Alfred defense is good. A.J. Licata will put pressure on anybody who runs or throws the ball. We know that. So I'm going to look for Fran to get some good protection, and I'm going to look for how he responds. We were talking about this the other day at practice, Danny, how well they were throwing but with no pressure on them. It should be interesting to see what happens when they go up against a good caliber defense and get some um, get some guys who are uh, putting pressure on them. And also, about practice, there was one man who wasn't participating in practice. That's Tristan Brown, the four-year running back for the Bombers. He was supposed to be the starter today, but... Unfortunately, he is unavailable, so we're going to Isaiah Tahiti getting the starting uh, role at running back, and what loss will it uh, suffer without having Tristan Brown in the backfield? Well, it's a big one. I mean, we knew how effective he was for this team last year, of course, before, um, before um, you know, things kind of went south on the season. They did play well at home, though. We did see that consistently from Ithaca, but some struggles last year on, uh, on the offensive side um, of rise. the ball. And so, with that, we'll go to the National this Anthem. Time, Ithaca College would like and welcome back to Butterfield Stadium. I'm Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts here on VICradio.org. And looks like Alfred will be back to receive the kick. And receiving for the Alfred Saxons is Kenny Speed, very good name for football player, and Aaron Griffin. Kicking off for the Bombers will be David Prudholm. And this is his first year as a starter, as a starting kicker for the Bombers. He, will, uh, he was one for two last year in field goals and two for three in extra point opportunities. So this is his first time in the big starting role. So he wears the same number as Max Rotnecker, the place kicker before him. So number 34 and Kenny Speed and Aaron Griffin await the kickoff. And kicking with that, who are your players to watch, Jackson? Well, you know, you just mentioned the kicking. Um, they kind of lived and died by that last year. I'm looking to see how they, they rebound from some of those um, from some of those highs and lows. But I'm looking at Kenny Bradley. I'm looking at Pat Minot. Um, two big guys on the defense that are returning and can make a difference, as well as Adam Fron on the offensive side. See how he handles the pressure that we know will come to him eventually. Absolutely. And the kick is off, and... Doesn't go very far, reaches the 16-yard line, and it's picked up by Kenny Speed. Speed, looking for options, and he gets taken down at about the 30-yard line. That is where Alfred will pick off their first offensive possession of the 2017 season. Alfred's offense is led by Bryce Morrison, a first-year starter. As we mentioned, Tyler Johnson, the defensive line coach of Ithaca, was the starter for Alfred the last four years. Lining up at wide receiver, they have Jaden Gavidia and Rodney Etienne. Shotgun formation for the Saxons. Kenny Speed in motion and it's a fake reverse and actually that's a wildcat formation. Malik Fuentes took the snap. Malik How about that? Uh, you know, that definitely an interesting audible there. I mean, you see, he sent the man in motion right before the play took place and it, got, it caught the Ithaca off, uh, defense, excuse me, offhand. 
So now Bryce Morrison will be under center this time. An interesting play to start the game. Malik Fuentes taking the snap. He's the starting running back for the Alfred Saxons. A little bit in the wildcat formation here. We'll see if they do that throughout the game. Shotgun formation. Bryce Morrison awaits a snap. And he hands it off to Fuentes, who tries to go up the middle, and he's taken down immediately. This is set up third down and about six. Hand off to Malik Fuentes. Malik Fuentes last year. He's, he, he averaged 10 yards per carry. His longest run of the year was 26 yards. He did rush for a touchdown. But this is a guy who is physical. Alfred, he can make some noise up the middle. And he can escape tackles. He can evade tackles, excuse me, very well. Malik Fuentes, all E8 running back. Five touchdowns last year. Nearly approached 800 yards on the ground. And now it's empty backfields for Bryce Morrison. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Morrison gets a snap. Looks left, and it's a short pass to Rodney Etienne, and he's taken down. That should be a first down for the Saxons. Morrison's oh, okay, pass complete yeah, to no Rodney problem. Etienne. Yeah. Tackle made by Kenny Bradley. Yeah, we, I mean, we got them both on air. I'm going to move so the Kenny Bradley up to the RP right now, okay? Gets the tackle okay. on the play. First down from the 42-yard no we'll line for the Saxons. Good for an Alfred first down. Now they're waiting for some referee calls. Thirteen twenty-one remaining in this first quarter. Of course, it's scoreless tie, first possession for the Saxons. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers each way for Morrison. Minot creeps in, looking for a blitz. Minot does blitz, but short, go, short pass goes to Kenny Speed. It's a screen pass, and Bombers bump into each other. Speed down the sideline, gets to the 30, and he's taken down by Brad Helmkamp at about the 18-yard line. Great screen pass and great speed down the field by Kenny Speed. Yeah, great blocking on the left side of the field, and Speed just running with it, taking the ball, taking that opportunity. And great, great way, great juking there by him to get out of some tacklers that were in front of him. So Kenny Speed with a huge game there. Saxons now in the red zone. Pistol formation for the Alfred Saxons. Kenny Speed getting a break after that big run. And Morrison sends a man in motion. That's his tight end, EJ Sajewski. And handoff goes to number 27. And about a nine yard gain. That will bring them to about the 11 yard line. Number 27 for the Saxons is Nazir Smith. Freshman running back. Now it looks like they're going to the Wildcat again. Malik Fuentes in the shotgun formation, Jackson. Alfred becoming pretty predictable early on, but still capitalizing. Fuentes gets a snap, and he's going to run right. No one behind him, no option available. And he will get past the chains and gets the first down at about the six-yard line. So they go to the Wildcat again after that was the first play of the game. I think what you're seeing early on is great blocking from the offensive line mm -hmm. and everybody around Fuentes. I mean, they're pretty much running the exact same play. They they haven't ran more than than uh, they haven't passed the ball more than two Fuentes times. With the, carry, tackle made by the pass they did make, the screen pass to Kenny Speed, was a huge play that got them into the red zone. And it looks like time has stopped. Eleven nineteen remaining in the first quarter. Uh, Saxons rather are in inside their ten yard line on the doorstop of the end zone. They're going wildcat again. Malik Fuentes. Fuentes gets the snap. He's running right again. This time he gets past one man, but cannot get past Dan Loisos, the leading tackler of the Bombers last year. Loisos, someone we talked about on the pregame broadcast, and, you know, we, we know the difference he's going to make. Minogue, Bradley, all those guys on the defensive side, they're big. We 
anticipated a lot, and there's a big stop right there. Had he not gotten that tackle on Fuentes, you may have seen a touchdown there, the first one of the game. A shoestring tackle by Dan Loizos there. So second down from about the three-yard line for the Alfred Saxons. Their first possession has been a successful one. Pistol formation for Bryce Morrison. Morrison sends his tight end in motion. Gets the snap. Hands off to Fuentes. Fuentes switching directions a couple times, but he's taken down by a multitude of Bombers at the two-yard line. Big stop there for the Bombers. Third down and about two. Uh, that would be great if they could hold uh, the Saxons to a field goal here, considering the way this drive unfolded at first. You mentioned the, the big pass from uh, to Saxon. Or excuse me, from Saxon to uh, Fuentes, which of course got this uh, Alfred in the red zone. But if Ithaca can stop them here, it'd be a good tone to set for Fran in the offense. And this front seven has always been a specialty for the Ithaca Bombers. They're always tough to get past. Although there's only one returning starter from the defensive line, that's Gaetano Rapicki. Wildcat formation for the Saxons. Fuentes gets a snap, he runs right, finds the hole, bounces to the outside, and he scores. Touchdown, Alfred Saxon, 6 0. Early on in this game, 9.50 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Ithaca's going to have to do a much better job of guarding the outsides, uh, gu guarding the edges of the line. We saw Fuentes multiple times on that drive go right around on an outside route, and he was able to get by that uh, right near pylon and just get in. So Trevor Monk lines up to tack on the extra point. Kick is up and it is through the uprights and good. 7-0 Saxons. A 69-yard drive for the Alfred Saxons to kick off this game. 7-0 Saxons. Only nine plays, Danny, on that drive. Very efficient. Got a couple big first downs. Now it's up to the Ithaca offense to counter that. Ithaca offense. It's a new look Ithaca offense with Adam Fran under center. And let's see how he performs in his first year as the starter. Adam Fran is used to the playbook. That's what earned him the starting job. He's been around for a while. He's a senior here and has learned under Wolfgang Schaefer. So lining up to receive the kick, Anthony Capozzi and Jordan Shem. Jordan Shem, a preseason All-American for his returning prowess. One of the best return men in the nation. And we know the speed he has. We know the toughness he has. And hopefully he puts it to use for him. Trevor Monk set to kick off for Alfred. Trevor Monk approaches the ball, kicks it off, and it gets to about the 10 yard line, recovered by Shem. Shem, that's to the left, and gets to about the 30 yard line before he's taking down flag on the play. Jordan Let's Shem await the call the from the referees. Maybe a holding here on it. So solid return for Jordan Shem, getting about 20 yards to get to the 30 yard line. But it could be coming back. During the return, the little ball away, and the return team for 23 at the distance to the goal, first down. So a legal block. That will send them back a good amount of distance back to where Jordan Shem caught the ball at around the 10 yard line. So backs against the wall for the Ithaca Bombers to start off their game. Now it's Adam Fran in the shotgun formation. One received to the left, two to the right. Awaits some calls from the sideline. Fran gets the snap. He's running right, has the option, breaks through the middle, and gets hit hard. But that could be a first down. Let's see where the spot is. He'll move. He'll move and the chains, chains are moving, yeah. With the QB keeper. Made by That's a good sign. We have not seen a QB option in a couple of years for the Ithaca Bombers. There's a new look offense. And a screen pass goes to Will Gladney, and it's a wide receiver pass. Gladney throws to the right, and it is brought in. What a catch. Great play by the Ithaca Bombers. Will Gladney with a for A wide receiver pass from Will Gladney. What? Unexpected play. Okay, Zach on. Raymond making the catch. No, no, no. You know what? Yeah, just keep going. Just keep, taking it. Just keep doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep calling it like you didn't know. 
So there is an unsportsmanlike conduct called on the Bombers. Or out for bench, rather. And if the Bombers are moving up. So a wide receiver pass from Will Gladney gets the Bombers way downfield. And then the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the Alfred Saxons moves them down even more to about the 38-yard line. Yeah, Ithaca moving quickly on this drive. Only 9.20 uh, left in the first quarter here. Let me see if they can capitalize. They got Fran in the shotgun here. Fran in the shotgun. There's Isaiah DeHady. Zach Raymond started out this game at running back for the Bombers. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. Fran gets the snap. Now he's looking to pass. Throws it to Will Gladney, and he's taken down quickly by Nicholas Milgates. Quick on his feet there. We saw him, like I was saying before, you know, even if it's the short passes, you want to see progression down the field. You want to see them move. And even if you get the first down, you know, one first down per minute, it's better than no first downs at all. Absolutely. And check this out. J.R. Cesar, starting wide receiver for the Bombers in the backfield next to Adam Fraun in the shotgun formation. Fraun awaits the signals. 8.23 to go in this first quarter. Sends Cesar in motion. Screen pass to Cesar, and it's missed. And Alfred picks it up just in case, but that will go down as an incomplete pass. Fraun looked a little bit rushed there. Maybe thought some pressure was coming. Turns out there was nobody around him, but just a simple missed throw there. So now it sets up second and four, or third and four, rather, for the Bombers. Isaiah DeHady to the left of Adam Fraun. And shotgun formation again. Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left, and it looks like Will Gladney's lining up behind Jack Ewell. Saxons have a 4-3, so you know they're playing for the pass right now. Mm -hmm. And a blitz is coming from the left. Screen pass goes to Gladney. This time he's going to take himself, and he gets the first down and gets taken down to about the 20-yard line. That's a tricky spot, yeah. I mean, it looked like Alfred was playing for the pass. We saw... Um, Fran earlier, of course, in the drive, run the ball. QB sneak is first play out. First down. And Fran looking screen again. Pa pocket collapses. He rolls right, and he throws it out of bounds. Intended for Gladney there in the right corner of the end zone. Intended for Jack so on that first play of this, uh, or the last play before that one, Adam Fran, good job recognizing the blitz. He saw the blitz coming from the left, looked immediately to the right, and got a quick screen pass to Will Gladney and got the first down. Shotgun formation again for Adam Fran and the Bombers. One wide receiver to the right, that's Will Gladney, and two to the left. And a flag on the play, could be delay a game. False start on Isaiah DeHaiti. So that kills a little bit of momentum for the Bombers here. Sets up second and 15 from the 25 yard line. Expect a pass here, Ithaca giving clear signs that they're going to air the ball out to uh, three wide receivers out. And a shotgun formation. Fran likes that hard count. Saw it a lot in practice on the other And Fran, again, with another hard count, sends Jack Ewell in motion, and the whistle's blown. Uh, yeah. huh. Delay of game called on the Ithaca Bombers. And this is not a good look for them right now, Danny. And you can see right now that they're pretty confused as to what's going on. The whole offense uh, just glaring in awe at the sideline, trying yeah. to find the right play. So now it's second and 20 from the 30-yard line. Another hard count from Adam Fromm. Fran gets a snap, throws right, and it's caught by Will Gladden. He turns inside and gets it back to about the 20-yard line. So now it's third and 10 after the 10-yard game. And back to the original line of scrimmage there. And Ithaca getting a little bit more conservative with running the ball now, and that's good. That's what you want to see, especially on a third down approaching. Third down and 10 from the 20-yard line for the Bombers. Adam Franz tries to draw them off sides. 
Fraun gets the snap. Good protection. Fraun looking end zone. And Zazara's there. Catch and scores. JR Zazara. Adam Fraun pass complete. Oh. Oh no, they, they call it back. Incomplete intended for JR Zazara. Wow, they, they said his feet are out of bounds. JR Zazara looks like he caught an easy touchdown. I looked to drag his feet in at first, but the sideline ref pretty emphatic David with Prudhomme the, um, to attempt the field out of bounds goal. Call. So David Prudhomme on to tack on three points after the call is played back, or the play is called back. Snap, and the kick is up, and it is no good. Wide right. So. Bombers looks good on that drive, but come away with no points, and that's unfortunate for the Sitka offense. It is, you know, the, those two penalties right now, back to back, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the delay Sargent, are really going to be magnified later in this game if they, if they are, are down to the wire with Alfred. You have been selected for today's so it looks like the problem on that play to Zazara, Zazara was backing up and he couldn't see where his feet was, and that's how he ended up with his feet out of bounds, was watching the ball, not his feet. So now Alfred Saxons take the ball at the 20 yard line, first and 10. They got 80 yards to go to try to get another end zone. And the Ithaca defensive line switching around their formation a lot. Pistol formation for the Saxons. Staniszewski in motion, fake handoff, goes over the middle, tipped up, and Kenny Bradley nearly pulled in an interception on the first pass. Bryce Morrison tried to look over the middle to his tight end, but Kenny Bradley got in front of that one. Second and 10 for the Alfred Saxons after the first pass is knocked incomplete. Now three backs in the backfield, two to the sides of Bryce Morrison, one behind him. And a loud clap from Bryce Morrison trying to draw the Ithaca Bombers off sides. They don't bite. Morrison gets the snap. Hands it off to Malik Fuentes, who's running right again. And he's taken down nearly immediately. It's about a one-yard gain before he's dragged to the camp. To, dragged to the grass. tackle made by Kenny Bradley. Third down, and now eight to go. Alfred, third down. So far, the 4-2-3 defense that we mentioned seems to be working for the Bombers as far as stopping the run goes. Shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons. Two wide receivers each way. Morrison gets the snap. Heavy blitz coming. Morrison gets out of the pocket, getting chased down, and he does get the first down before getting hit hard by Pat Minogue. Looks like one of the coaches on the Alfred sideline was just rammed after Minogue had dashed Morrison. Haydack there bringing, bringing the heat. Very hard tackle. He's right there. He's right there. And they're trying to mark the measurements and could be a fourth down. Looks like he got the first, and Alfred Saxon's coach is arguing with the referees. Should be a big play for Ithaca if they could stop the Saxons after what we thought might be a successful follow-up drive after getting some momentum on defense. The Saxons, of course, we all know, um, were able to limit. Ithaca College students, be sure to check in with your ID at the marketing table by the end of the first quarter to become a part of the Blue Crew. Simply swipe your ID They're still trying to mark exactly where the ball is and if it's a first down or not. But on that last play, great pressure by that Ithaca front seven. They brought a lot on the blitz, but Bryce Morris recognized it, rolled right, and nearly got the nine yards necessary for the first down. Referee still can't figure it out, though. Waiting for this call. <laughs> Tough when you had a bit of a scrum on the sideline right there. Tough to get a good read as to where the ball and his feet went out of bounds. Mm -hmm. They line up the chains. They put the ball down, and 
Yeah. And it looks like the, Thank you for the tip of the football hits the chains, and I still can't tell what the decision is. Looks as if it's going well, to be fourth down, fourth down inches. Alfred, Alfred keeps their offense on the field. They were 6 for 17 last year, or rather, that's Ithaca stats. Alfred was 11 for 19 on fourth down conversions. Pistol formation. Handoff goes to Fuentes, and he does get the first down. Gets a three yard game when he needed a couple inches, so that's good enough for the first down. And this is what I was waiting to see from him a situation where he needed a couple inches, a situation where you knew, both teams knew it was going to be a run. It was going to kind of, kind of, going to be a clash of titans, if you will, at the uh, line of scrimmage. And he showed us why he is the elite running back, on, in, one of the elite running backs in this league. Empire Conference Alfred projected to finish first. Hard count from Bryce Morrison, shotgun formation, three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, and he hands off to Fuentes again. Fuentes gets some blocks, but he's pulled down by Pat Minogue after about a one-yard game. Good awareness from Pat Minogue to come off his block and drag Fuentes down from behind. Second down and eight set up for the Alfred Saxons. Shotgun formation for the Saxons. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Morrison doesn't move much, and it's knocked away again by Kenny Bradley. Morrison Kenny Bradley looking great in the middle in pass protection situations. Bradley reading that perfectly, saw the eyes of Morrison right when he took that ball and immediately just cut for the middle. Jaden Gavidia was the intended receiver on the play, but Kenny Bradley deflects it in the air. Alfred! Third down Third and eight. Third down! Two wide receivers to the right, two to the left. Empty backfield for Bryce Morrison. Heavy presence on the line for Ithaca Bombers, and only a couple of them rush. Bryce Morrison looks over the middle and gets the pass complete to Rodney Entienne, and that's a first down and a big 20-yard gain for the Alfred Saxons. Made by Rodney Etienne, the senior wide receiver for the Alfred Saxons, coming up big that time. Etienne last year, one touchdown, 291 yards, nearly approached 300. And now it sets up Wildcat formation on first down. Malik Fuentes awaiting the snap. Fuentes sends a man in motion. Fakes the handoff, goes up the middle, and he's taken down by Brad Helmkamp, the fullback turned defensive lineman. That's got to be a pretty Wendy's big change. Carry, tackle made by Brad Helmkamp. You saw Ithaca work on this in practice a little bit, a little bit, but it seems as if after a couple rounds on the first time that they got it, they got it hammered out. Yep. Shotgun formation now. Bryce Morrison takes the field for the Saxons. Hard count for Bryce Morrison. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right, and the tight end lined up to the left of the offensive line. Morrison gets a snap. He rolls left, looking left, and it is caught by Etienne, and he gets taken down on the sideline. Sets up third down and three. Sachs is taking advantage a little bit of the zone defense up the middle, and the linebackers, and of course, you know, when you can get a quick pass out to the sideline, you can take advantage of that and maybe get a couple more yards. So now it's Wildcat again. Third down and about three for the Alfred Saxons. Malik Fuentes awaits the snap, the all E8 running back, and fakes the handoff, tries to take it himself, and he looks like it looks like he got the yards necessary for the first down. Oh no, he didn't. He's about a yard short. 
this is where you're kind of uh, uh, no man's land here, Danny. You're right in between the area of punting and going for it. Should be interesting to see what they do. And it seems like the offense is going to stay on the field. One for one in this game on fourth down conversions are the Saxons. As I mentioned, they hit about 58% of their fourth down attempts last season. Alfred, fourth down. Now it's a shotgun formation for Bryce Morrison and the Saxons. Big opportunity here for the Ithaca defense. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap goes to Morrison, he looks right. Screen pass, and he's taken down by two Bombers. That's going to be a turnover on downs. Bombers ball. Definitely out of the ordinary there, and Alfred kind of maybe think Ithaca would expect the expected, so going with the unexpected didn't turn out the way they wanted to, and great defense by the Ithaca Bombers, not just right on the line, but staying close with those receivers. It's a turnover so Jaden on down. the catch, but he was taken down by two Bombers, including Kenny Bradley. One of those stalwart linebackers for the Bombers' defense. Pistol formation for the Bombers. Or looks like shotgun, rather. Isaiah DeHaiti lined up next to Adam Fron. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Jack Yule to the left of the offensive line. Adam Fron gets the snap, hands it off to the Haiti, and the Haiti's tripped up, and looks like got past the line of scrimmage, but did not gain much. Hand off to Isaiah the Haiti, tackled by Cole Reed. Shotgun formation. Adam Fron gets it, past it. Will Gladden is complete on the left sideline. He gets the first down. We've seen a lot of man-to-man -man defense early on on both sides, and similar to what Alfred was doing last drive, Ithaca taking advantage of it with those quick passes to the side, over the middle, the screen plays. That's how they're getting the yards. Again, one or two yards only, but they're still moving the ball. It's good for Ithaca, first down. Man-to-man defense, dangerous to play against Ithaca. The two 6-3 wide receivers they have, J.R. Cesar and Will Glanny, very potent on offense. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. Two wide receivers to the left, two to the right. Adam Fron gets a snap. Screen pass is short. So Adam Fron did not put enough mustard on that one. Could not reach Will Gladney on the screen pass. Yeah, you know, Danny, we've seen that now twice from Fron early on. The quick screen passes out to the left, bouncing them to, I think it was Gladney before, doing it again. So maybe that's something to work on uh, mm -hmm. as the game goes on. Now, new offense coming out for the Bombers. Second and ten. Shotgun formation. Kendall Anderson now lined up next to Adam Fron. Will Gladney to the right. Fron takes the handoff and takes it himself, and that's a it was a good call because he would have been taken down behind the line of scrimmage, but Fron got back to the line of scrimmage and got tackled immediately. So third and ten as the option play. 41 ticks to go here in the first quarter. Bombers trying to tie this game up. They're around midfield, 49-yard line. Third down and nine. Shotgun formation. Kendall Anderson to the left of Adam Fron. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Alfred shows blitz. Only three guys in the line for Alfred, eight guys in the backfield. It looks like A.J. Licata will be looking for a sack here. The All-Pro. And again, Fron could not get the call off, and it's a delay of game. I did not even see a hard count attempt on that one either. Again, looking kind of bewildered at the sideline over there. Ithaca does not seem to have any type of direction on some of these plays every now and then. At the end of the first quarter. Not a great sign early on, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Second quarter will begin shortly. And with that, 7-0 seven seven Alfred Saxon. What has stood out to you so far in these first 15 minutes? Uh, what I see so far is I see a lot of consistency from both teams. Again, we talked about those screen passes, the, the short outs to the right and left side, some good defense from Kenny Bradley. We saw that big play 
um, on the last drive for the Bombers defense. Saxons, on the other hand, you're seeing a lot of runs from Malik Fuentes, and I'm, I'm a little shocked at first because we know the game. We, we had an idea of what the game plan would be for the Saxons. I'm sure Tyler Johnson, who played for this team and this offense last year, did too. Maybe it's just a matter of pure execution on Ithaca's part. But Alfred... You know, despite the struggles they've had and despite the fact they've only put up one score, they're still moving the ball pretty consistently. It's just finishing the drives that they've got to do a little bit better. Ithaca, on the other hand, has got to do both. They gotta get they gotta get down to the red zone and then they gotta capitalize on it. And these penalties have been pretty costly so far for the bombers putting a halt to drives. As we saw, they were third and ten from the red zone and it sent them or third and goal from the red zone that sent them that back twenty yards to or rather ten yards to third and twenty. So these pre-snap penalties an early issue so far for the bombers. Shotgun formation on third and fifteen for Ithaca. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Kendall Anderson to the left of Adam Fron. Fron's going to take it himself, trying to get 15 yards, and he's taken down at about the 50-yard line. So fourth down and eight is set up, and Fron had a long way to go if he expected to take that himself. Fron with the QB keeper, tackle made by Nicholas Milgate. And the punt team comes out. This is Pat Minogue's first punt of the season. Average about 34 yards per punt last year. He's a linebacker, converted to a punter. Still plays linebacker, though. Pat Minogue on to punt for Ithaca. Jaden Gavidia back for Alfred. So Jaden Gavidia awaiting the punt. And the punt is up. Caught by Gavidia at the 10 yard line, avoids Ryan Moody. And he's taken down at about the 8 yard line. So great punt pressure from Ithaca there. And great field position for them to start. Alfred backed up against their own end zone here. 14 12 to go here in the second quarter. 7 0 is your score early on in this one. Alfred ranked 21st in the nation, went undefeated in the regular season last year, and got all the way to the Elite Eight in the playoff tournament before getting eliminated. Alfred sets up. Pistol formation. Bryce Morrison awaits the snap. One wide receiver each way. Hands it off to Malik Fuentes, and he's taken down immediately. Or rather, that was Aaron Griffin, the backup running back. Hand off to Aaron Griffin. Tackle made by Dan Loizos. So a short three-yard gain. Sets up second and seven. Pistol formation again it's hard when there's for like the Saxons. Saxons goes over the middle and Gavidia cannot bring in the ball. Bryce Morrison had a nice throw over the middle and that was Aaron Francis on the coverage. Jaden Gavidia was the intended receiver and went right through his hands. Third down at about eight. Alfred, third down. Alfred is on their own 12-yard line. And Kenny Bradley trying to fire up this defense before, giving them a little bit of a pep talk before this drive started. Could have been what made the difference here. They've shown up big so far. Bryce Morrison in the shotgun formation, gets the snap, throws left, and it's tipped early on and nearly picked off by Rob Daly. And that sets up fourth down and eight. And Alfred's punt team will come out for the first time today. A lot of pressure from Bradley on that right edge of the line. Almost got to Morrison there. Quickly able to release it though. And you're right, what a great play by Daly. Came this close to picking it off around the 40. So Trevor Monk, who serves as both the kicker and the punter for Alfred in his own end zone to punt this one off. Jordan Shem, one of the best return men in the nation, awaiting to receive. Shem gets it at the 45-yard line, runs left, cuts right, and finds a hole, but he's taken down at the 35-yard line. 
Jordan and Sam, one of the more exciting punt returners to watch. Gets a good one there. That was a 17-yard return for Shem right there. And as you said, one of the best punt returners in this nation, showing why right there. Really good and quick on his feet, evading a lot of those tackles and brushing by some of the feet. Once. And those skills certainly translate to his cornerback play. He's been the premier cornerback for Ithaca for a while. And looks like there is another penalty on the play, though, that will send them back to the 36-yard line. That's unfortunate after a good return from Jordan Shem. Penalties have been the bane of Ithaca Bombers football so far this, this game. Tyler Winslow making his first appearance as a wide receiver on offense. Kendall Anderson as the running back in the shotgun formation. Fran sends J.R. Cesar in motion. It's a wide receiver reverse. Oh, he kept it, and he gets taken down. Probably should have given it to J.R. Cesar there. It was a QB option. Keeps it himself. Ty Timmerman, Toby Hale, and Dave That's a five-yard loss for the Bombers. Second and 15 after the failed reverse play. Now, Ty Timmerman reading that perfectly there. J.R. Cesar in motion again. He's going to hand off to Cesaro this time, and he doesn't get any gains. Hand off to J.R. Cesaro. Tackle made by Marcus Alfred Ford. Alfred reading the Ithaca offense perfectly here. And think it was fair to expect something a little bit different with a similar setup this time around. Interesting call to run the wide receiver reverse twice in a row. And now it's third and 16. Fran awaiting signals. He can't take too much time. Shotgun formation. Fran with the hard count. Fran gets the snap. Looking left. Throws a big one downfield. And it is a simultaneous catch. Who will get the ball? It is a first down for the Bombers. An interesting call by the referees there as it was a simultaneous catch. Adam pass complete. And the Saxons are not going to be happy about it's that one. First down. Kyle Moore, Danny, it looked as if he had come up with the ball originally, but Gladney seemed to just rip it out of his hands as they were coming down to the ground. Shotgun formation. Quick snap here for the Bombers. Screen pass to Gladney and gets taken down quickly. About a five-yard gain. Will Gladney on that play leaping over the man covering him to make that catch in. It was a simultaneous catch in. Referees Grant Ithaca the first down. They're now at the 30-yard line. Adam Fran in shotgun formation. Saxons with a 4-3 here on the defense. Fran gets a snap. Option. Pitches it to Kendall Anderson. And he is pushed out of bounds with about one yard to go until he moves the chains. Great instinct there by Fran, just as he was about to get hit, Anderson. flicks it right there to Anderson. That's good instinct right there, rather than losing a couple of yards. Great to see the QB option becoming a part of this Ithaca offense. And Fran's going to take it himself, trying to get the QB sneak in. Looks like he got the distance. And that's the first down. The chains are moving. 23-yard line for the Bombers, and they are moving in this drive after that big play to Will Gladney. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. Isaiah to Haiti to the left of Fran. Two wide receivers right, one left. Fran awaits a snap. Gets a snap, fakes the handoff to the Haiti, tricks the defense, but he cannot get much yardage as he is taken down after about a two yard game. Graham anticipated that, and Fran, yeah, you, you said it, trying to scramble there. Kind of a quick play, he had no one open. Gary Brown with the tackle there. Backup cornerback. Adam Fran from shotgun again. Second and eight from the 21 yard line. Fran gets a snap, throwing long to Will Gladney in the end zone and it is caught. Touchdown Bombers. Getting his feet in right by the front of the end zone by that left high line. Gladney, three big plays on this drive. One of the underrated ones was that screen pass to the side that got them uh, to that first down marker. And here he is, definitely a big 
drive to cap off some ones originally that didn't go as they the plan. Now David Prentholm lining up to tie the game with the extra point. Missed the field goal attempt before. Prudholm kicks, and it is good. 7-7 after Will Gladney's touchdown. Beautiful touch by Adam Fon on that throw as well. Perfect. A little bit in front of him, but Gladney had just gotten out in front. It was just out in front of a little bit enough of the defender where it was able to be caught. And it resulted... And a good touchdown for it. Kyle Moore on coverage there. Not much he could do as Will Gladney broke free just as he got to the end zone. And Adam Fon finds him. So now the kickoff team coming onto the field. David Prudholm set to kick it off. Kenny Speed lining up to receive. Or rather, it's a different setup now. Aaron Griffin and Jaden Gavidia. David Prudhomme to kick off for Ithaca. Prudhomme lining up. It is 7-7 with 10-20 to go here in the second quarter. It's been a very competitive football game so far. Prudhomme, again, not getting much distance. This is caught at around the 18-yard line. Gavidia breaking to the left. Gets to about the 34-yard line before getting taken down. And that is where Alfred will attempt to answer Ithaca's game-tying touchdown. We've seen the Wildcat formation a lot for the Alfred Saxons. Malik Fuente is taking some snaps. But it looks like this time Bryce Morrison will be lining up from the pistol formation. One wide receiver to the right, a tight end to the left. Two, two running backs in the backfield. The handoff goes to Fuentes. He runs left and he's taken down quickly. A, third, a three yard gain for Fuentes on first down. Second down and seven from the 36 yard line. Shotgun formation for the Saxons. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Morrison awaits a snap. Oh. Got RJ D'Amico to jump. And the handoff goes to Jaden Gavidia. Gavidia passing it downfield and it's overthrown. He was looking for Rodney Etienne and he was wide open downfield. That would have been a touchdown. Had Jaden Gavidia got the right touch on that one. He's a good catching a break there and a little bit confused on the play. I think the Wildcat had thrown them off there. So Jaden Gavidia, a nice throw. We've seen two wide receiver throws in this game already. Pretty unique game. 7-7. 9.27 to go. Here in the second quarter. Shotgun formation for the Saxons. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. And Morrison gets a snap, and he was nearly sacked. This time he is. Jordan Shem brings him down in the backfield. That's a big loss of yards for the Saxons. Jordan Shem, not only a great return man and cornerback, also putting pressure on the quarterback and getting the sack there. It's now fourth down. And 15 from the 29-yard line. Trevor Monk lines up to punt. Jordan Shem, after making the sack there, lines up to receive the punt. There's a snap. Monk sends it downfield. It's not going to reach Jordan Shem. Takes a bounce. And it will get to the, about the 35-yard line. Huge play by Jordan Shem there to bring down Bryce Morrison in the backfield. Fans, check out athletics.ithaca.edu. So now, after last drive, success for the Bombers. What do you expect the Bombers to come out with in this drive, Jackson? Uh, similar plan right there. We saw what they did last time. Of course, uh, 
couple plays that went in their favor. Gladney was able to haul in a, a touchdown pass that uh, that big catch before towards the middle of the field. I'd say some more quick passes, maybe some runs over the middle. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Shares the czar and Jared Bauer and on the left and Will Gladney on the right. And the handoff goes to Isaiah to Haiti, who is taken down quickly, about a one-yard gain for the sophomore. Isaiah Haiti on the carry. So again, to Haiti starting in place of Tristan Brown, who was unavailable this week, did not practice much. Tristan Brown likely to be this starting running back all season. And he looks like he made progress in practice this week, so expect him back by week two. And there's a player down for the Alfred Saxons. It's Nicholas Milgate, who's made a couple tackles this game. So Isaiah DeHady not, not quite showing up yet in this opportunity for him to make a difference as a starting running back in this game, Jackson. Yeah, I mean, Ithaca's kind of lived and died by those long passes today. A couple were missed, of course, on the last drive. A couple in succession were made, and I think that that's what is what is key for them going forward is to show, again, some consistency, the quick passes over the middle, uh, the quick runs to the outside, exploit those Alfred defensive Ladies and gentlemen, balls. Matt DiLorenzo, please report to the marketing tent near the entrance. Shotgun formation. Today's halftime contest, and we'll need to report immediately to Four the Bobbers, Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Isaiah the Haiti in the backfield with Adam Fron. Fron. Screen pass to the left, finds Cesaro, he avoids a tackle, tries to get some yardage and is taken down at about the line of scrimmage, so not a big gain there. Sets up third down and seven, or third and six rather. Shotgun formation for the Bombers again. Fron, quick snap, throws to the Haiti who cannot bring it in. Try to catch it with one hand there Bronze on a short pass. To to so that sets up fourth down and six. Eight minutes to go here in the second quarter at Butterfield Stadium. Beautiful day for football. Indeed, a beautiful day for football. A bit of wind and plenty quick, of sun. Pat yeah. on to Hunt quick drive for Ithaca right there. Definitely a shock considering how well they seem to figure things out on the last one. It's now Pat Minogue and the punting team. Out to send the ball downfield. Jaden Gavidia lining up to receive. Minogue gets to about the 25 yard line where it bounces sideways and it will be touched at the 22 yard line. That's where the Saxons will kick off their drive. A little bit of an Ithaca bounce, as you said, Danny, going sideways towards the uh, 20 yard line mark on the right side of the field. And here the Saxons come, and they're going to have to put to, together something, as it may be one of, if not their last drive of the half, if Ithaca continues to move the clock mm -hmm. the way they have. So last year, Alfred averaged 37 points a game. But so far, the Ithaca defense has been standing strong in this one. Okay. Pistol formation for the Alfred Saxons. Okay. Handoff is a fake, and Jordan Shem knocks the ball away from Ronnie Etienne. Alfred goes play action on first down. Yeah, I think you're alluding to the offense before, and you're right. And I think what you're seeing is you're seeing a couple of missed opportunities uh, by the Saxons, a couple of bad throws by Morrison. But more importantly, I think you're seeing Ithaca get a little bit lucky on some of the on some of these longer passes, such as the one we saw in the last drive. Oh, yeah. The wide receiver pass was could have been a touchdown. And a wild card a wild cat rather. And it's a handoff to Aaron Griffin. A wide receiver reverse, and he's taken down by Mike Miller. Hand off to Aaron Griffin, tackled by Kenny Bradley. Right there, despite being tackled behind the line of scrimmage originally. So that's a three-yard gain for Aaron Griffin on the Wildcat reverse. 
Bryce Morrison takes the field again on third down and eight. They're at their own 26 yard line here. 7.14 to go. It's a tie ball game. Ithaca taking on the 21st ranked team in the nation. Alfred, the Alfred Saxons. Down. Shotgun formation for Bryce Morrison and the Saxons. Takes the throw right. Now throwing way downfield to Jaden Gavidia, and it's over his head. Morrison's Bryce Morrison overthrows his target. Another big throw where you alluded to missing those big plays of the Alfred Saxons. Yeah, you saw Kishbaugh a little bit behind on the Ithaca defensive side right there. But yeah, you know, another another missed throw by Morrison and Ithaca kind of gets a little bit of a gift wrapped punt here. So you have Trevor Monk lining up at his 10 yard line to kick off, or to punt rather. And the punt is up to Jordan Sham, and he's going to catch this one at the 40 yard line. Breaks through and he bounces to the outside. He's still standing and he's taken down to about where he got bounced. So Jordan Shem, tough runner there. Just staying on his feet. Yeah, staying on his feet, exactly. Like you said, after despite getting hit into another world right there. Yeah. And again, mentioned the forward progress. So five yard gain on the return for Jordan Shem. It's First down and 10 from the 45-yard line for the Ithaca Bombers. Shotgun formation for Adam Fron. Will Gladney to the left. Two wide receivers to the right for the Bombers here. Tie ball game. 6.45 to go. Fron looks left. Quick pass to Will Gladney, and he's pushed out of bounds. Fron's pass complete to Will Gladney. Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts here on VICRadio.org. It's Ithaca Bombers football versus Alfred Saxon, the 21st ranked team in the nation. And it's 7-7 so far. Option play there for Adam Fry. He tosses it to Kendall Anderson, who gets nailed behind the line of scrimmage. So Adam Fry ran the option there, but took a long time to make his choice. And by the time he tossed it, the Alfred defense was all over Kendall Anderson. Raekwon Gear with the tackle. Third down and eight. Fron from the shotgun formation is going to take it himself, and it looks like he does get the first down this time. Breaks some tackles, and he's running along along the sideline. Can he gets the end zone, gets a block from Gladney, and he's in. Adam Fron takes it himself. What a play from his own 48-yard line. A huge run, a 52-yard run for Adam Fron. Touchdown Bombers. That is a big play, definitely one that's going to kindle something right. Definitely is a nice cap off to a drive that didn't seem like it was going Ithaca's way at first. A couple completions and great blocking there on the sideline. We know how quick Fron is. We saw him in practice and a big guy. Behind the, uh, behind the line of scrimmage. He's able to evade a lot of those tackles and just beat the entire Alfred defense for, like you said, 52 yards. Adam Front, 6'4", 215. Big quarterback, but he can move too, as you saw there. And the kick is up. It is good. 14-7, Ithaca Bombers after a huge run for Adam Front. And Will Gladden, the unsung hero of that play, gets a huge block in Raekwon Greer at about the five-yard line. That gives Adam Fron the lane to score on that play. What a move by Adam Fron, cutting to the outside and hitting that sideline hard. So Adam Fron, a 52-yard touchdown on the QB keeper. And you saw Raekwon uh, Greer, excuse me, with that big uh, tackle. They put Ithaca back on the preceding play, and it was nice of Gladney to recognize that and get a big block on him that helped pave the uh, that helped opened up the uh, way for Fron to dance into the end zone. So that's 14-7 after Adam Franz, QB keeper. David Brudholm set to kick off for Ithaca following the IC touchdown. Aaron Griffin and Jaden Gavinia back to return for Alfred. David Prudhomme lining up. It's Aaron Griffin and Jaden Gavinia. And it's an onside kick. Oh, it's caught by Rodney Etienne though, as Alfred was caught off guard there. Questionable decision a little bit if you ask me with a little bit over uh, with just almost six minutes to go before the half. Definitely some time for both teams to get uh, a fair amount of plays in. Bold call by Dan Swanson, trusting his defense now. 
as Alfred starts at their own 47-yard line. And Danny, this is, a, this is a decision that really could come back to bite Ithaca if Alfred scores here. So they're going to start in the pistol formation. Bryce Morrison, three and out last time for the Alfred Saxons. And the handoff goes to Malik Fuentes, who runs left, bounces off a tackle, and gets taken down after a two-yard gain, setting up second and eight. Handoff to Malik Fuentes, tackled by John Haddock. John Haddock, a new starter for the Ithaca Bombers on the defensive line. Sophomore making the tackle there. I haven't seen Kenny Speed lining up for returns for the Alfred Saxons, potentially injured in this one. Started the game, and now he's not there. Shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons. 49-yard line. The snap goes to Morrison. Morrison trying to take it himself, and he's taken down by about five bombers at about the line of scrimmage. Morrison taken down this is by big, Danny. Ithaca. Ithaca responding to that pressure well and the challenge that was put on them with that onside kick, only allowing Alfred to get, as you said, on a couple plays ago, Malik Fuentes' two-yard run. Other than that, they've been lights out on this drive so far. So okay. great playing by that front seven Alfred, of the Ithaca Bombers. Down. Alfred lines up in the shotgun. It's third and eight from the 49 yard line. The sideline, Mike. Morrison gets a snap. All right. Okay. Throws left okay. to Gavidia, and it is caught. A big play by the Alfred Saxon. That'll bring him to the about the 16 yard line. Gavidia rising up physically and figuratively to the challenge right there on that play. Hopped about five feet in the air to go up and get what? that ball, and a perfect throw by Morrison, as you said. Big play, big pressure spot. Got the third down, or got the third down completion. Excuse me. Now Alfred finds himself in a good position to score. I don't know if the sideline. So wildcat formation now. Alfred Saxons, first down and 10 from the 18 yard line. Malik Fuentes fumbles the snap and gets taken down to the line of scrimmage. So they go for the Wildcat, and Malik Fuentes, not a quarterback, can't handle the snap. Fuentes on the carry, loses the ball, recovered. They've been in the back of minds of some people when this game started again. Like, he's not a quarterback, not accustomed to taking that snap. But here we are, and he's handled it so far pretty well up to this point. So good job recovering by Malik Fuentes to get back to the line of scrimmage before getting taken down. It's a pistol formation with Aaron Griffin in the backfield behind Bryce Morrison. Tight end in motion. And Bryce Morrison with the play action. Throws right, uh, throws left rather, and is caught. Oh. And some, some bombers signaled incomplete pass, but the referee does say touchdown. And this will be 13-14 after Alfred's touchdown. And referees explain to the secondary that that is a catch. So the touchdown is good. For number 85 of the Alfred Saxons, that is Christopher Harders. A third string tight end for the Alfred Saxons. And now Trevor Monk on to tie it up. The kick is up and off the upright, no good. 14-13 is the score. The extra point attempt, no good. The score. That's definitely not what you want to see, especially after those some big plays on that drive uh, by the Saxons. Pretty deflating right there to end it. And now with three minutes roughly, they're going to have to uh, make a quick stop on the defensive side of the ball and hope that they'll have enough time to uh, put themselves in a position to either score a touchdown or a field goal. That drive for the Alfred Saxons, not a very long drive. They started at the 48-yard line. Uh, but probably Bryce Morrison's best drive of this game. And again, Danny, we, I, I alluded to it before. That's the risk you take and the pressure you put on your defense when you make a decision like this and to this magnitude. Uh, with, again, we made with roughly six minutes left in the half. It's now three minutes to go in the first half. The score is Ithaca 14, Alfred 13. Alfred is ranked 21st in the nation 
Ithaca coming off a 5-5 five and five season where they were undefeated at home. Ithaca has won 19 straight season openers. We're going to make that 20 today. Trevor Monk kicks it off. Sends it downfield. Jordan Shem catching it around the 8-yard line. He's running down to the right and eventually taken down at the 29-yard line or so. So Jordan Shem, another great return. And that sets up Ithaca Bombers for potentially their final drive of the first half. This is the inconsistency we saw last year, the inability to score in those two-minute drills, the inability to capitalize late in the half or in the game. And we'll see if Adam Fron can bring something new to the table. And Dan Swanson, too. So three minutes left in this first half. Shotgun formation for Adam Fron. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Fron gets a snap, fakes the handoff to Kendall Anderson, and he's rolling left now, pressured by the Alfred defensive line. He throws it out of bounds. Fron's pass incomplete. Toby Hale providing the pressure for the Alfred Saxon defense, chasing Adam Fron down to the sideline, forcing him to make a throw out of bounds. Toby Hale, one of three seniors on the defensive line, for the Alfred Saxons. Okay, sounds good. Shotgun for the Ithaca Bombers. Second and 10 from the 30 yard line. 2.45 to go in this first half. Fron gets a snap, pitches it to JR Cesara. Cesara runs to the right and taken down after about a three yard gain. So positive yardage that time for the Ithaca Bombers on the, re on the reverse play. Taken down in bounds, meaning the clock is ticking with 2.30 left to go. Fron going to have to work quickly here. J.R. Cesar, a former quarterback, and was expected to see that wide receiver pass that we saw Gladney do for Cesar at some point this season. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. And Fron throws it over the middle, and it's batted down the line of scrimmage. Fron's pass batted down by Cole Reed. So that sets up fourth down with 2.01 to go in the first half. And the punting team will come onto the field. Saw A.J. Licata right there in the, yeah, in the back of that scrum. We haven't seen too much from him today on the defensive side in terms of sacks or stoppages, but expect to see that maybe a little bit later in the game. Absolutely. So Pat Minogue lined up at his 20-yard line to punt and sends it downfield towards the sideline and a great bounce gets to the other 20-yard line. So a very good punt by Pat Minogue, pinning Alfred at the 20-yard line. So it's pretty close to a two-minute drill here for the Alfred Saxons with 152 left in the first half. Bryce Morrison and the Alfred Saxons offense coming out to the field. Empty backfield for the Alfred Saxons. One wide receiver to the left, two to the right. Heavy pressure on the line for the Ithaca Bombers. And a couple linebackers drop back and throw it to the right is complete. And he's knocked out of bounds. About a three yard gain on the screen pass there to Chance Olivas. Tackle made by Patmano. Shotgun formation for Bryce Morrison and the Saxons. Morrison gets a snap, looking over the middle, and the pass is complete to Rodney Etienne, and that's good enough for a first down, and then some, bringing them to the 40-yard line. Oh, but it's called back, a holding called on the Saxons. It's going to put him back even 10 yards more. 
roughly around their own end zone. So huge play, or huge penalty rather, on the Alfred Saxons as they got a first down, but it's called back. Now they're at second and 14 from the 16 yard line. Shotgun formation for Morrison and the Saxons. Throws right, it's Aaron Griffin, and he is taken down by Dan Moisos. Nice 10 yard gain there, roughly, to put Alfred in a position where they could potentially run or throw for a first down. It's nice to have that option here. This late in the half. 110 to go in this first half. Shotgun formation for the Saxons. It is 14-13 Bombers after the missed extra point by Trevor Monk of the Alfred Saxons. Morrison drops back and he is almost taken down and this time he is taken down by Brad Helmkamp. So Morrison gets the line of scrimmage but Brad Helmkamp, the former fullback, making the big play there alongside Morrison Ryan Moody. Taken down in the backfield and Ty Ithaca is called and by the Ithaca Moody. Bombers with 54 ticks to go in the first half. Jordan Shem will get a chance to return this punt. This is a big drive for them, and we talked about the importance of executing within two minutes. Well, now try and do it within 54 seconds. That's going to be a big test for Fran. We saw them consistently run these types of drills in practice, but again, you and I were talking about this constantly. Doing it with pressure, doing it with a good defense, doing it with an all-star such as A.J. Licata there who can get to you. And although we haven't seen too much of him today, don't sleep on him. This guy is one of the best in the league, highly touted and highly looked at and looked upon by this Ithaca offense. Absolutely. A.J. Licata, plenty of honors in this preseason and was in consideration for D3 Player of the Year last year. Trevor Monk gets the snap, kicks it off from the 10-yard line, and Trevor, uh, Jordan Shem, rather, catches it at the 35, and oh, Jordan Shem is hit hard at the 30, uh, the 44-yard line, and a flag is thrown, and it should be a hit to the head, it's called. Yeah, either that or an unnecessary roughness penalty. We saw trying to get a good look. I don't know exactly who it was, but came running in and similar to that hit that Shem took, I think, on the punt return where he got bounced around, mm -hmm. going in the opposite direction at full speed. So it looks like he was getting taken down by the legs. Oh, no foul called. So they were considering a face mask call, mm. even though it looked like he just got hit hard up high. Much to my dismay, I think both of us, many here, were under the impression that it would be an unnecessary hit mm -hmm. or roughness. Hopefully Jordan Shem is okay. Shotgun formation from the 43-yard line for the Bombers. 43 seconds to go in the first half. Good starting field position. Fran looks left, and now he's looking right. And a screen pass again is short of his target. That's the storyline you've been looking at today, Jackson. Yeah, Danny, this is something he's really going to have to Fran clean up. We have saw a couple of these simple passes off to the side. The screen passes, the quick slants. The quick slants he's, he's executed well on. We saw those by the sidelines when he puts more juice on it. Yep. But when he seems to just lob it or, you know, air it out for a couple of yards, it doesn't go as well. Now Adam Fran lined up in shotgun, second and ten. Fran with two wide receivers each way. Fran gets it, throws it over the middle, Will Gladney with the catch, and he will be brought down at about the 17-yard line. A big play again for Will Gladney, timeout called by the Ithaca Bombers. Or rather, no timeout called. Under 30 seconds to go, clock is ticking. Adam Fran avoids the sack, rolls right, he's going to take it himself and gets the line of scrimmage and steps out of bounds. Oh, he does not get the line of scrimmage. Ty Timmerman forces him out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage, so a two-yard loss. Clock does stop, though, with 18 seconds left. Bombers have the ball at the 20-yard line. Putting themselves in field goal range here could be up by three points at the end of this half. Four points. 
Potentially. Four, excuse me. Yeah. They're up by one right now, 14-13. 18 seconds to go in the first half. Three more, that is. Adam Cron looking over the middle to J.R. Cesar, and the route was jumped by Gino Iozino. J.R. Cesaro was the intended target, but Front great coverage there by Alfred. Intended for J.R. Cesaro, Marcus Ford on the coverage for Alfred. Or rather, Marcus Ford, 34 versus 24, got them mixed up there. Yeah, Ford playing close on that. You see more man-to-man -man here down towards uh, Alfred's red zone. Third down and 12 from the 20-yard line. J.R. Cesaro from shotgun formation, 14 seconds to go. Big drive for the Bombers here. Fran gets a snap, looking left, throwing end zone to Jair Cesaro, and it is nearly intercepted, but out of his hands. Pass incomplete intended for JR That's Luis Ortega making the big play on defense. Eight seconds to go now. Field goal unit comes on. David Prudholm missed the field goal before. He'll be lined up on the right hash marks. <laughs> David Brudom on to attempt the field goal for Ithaca. Looks like a 36-yard attempt. Timeout called by Alfred. Right, cool. Timeout. Yep. Alfred. First game timeout. Bomber fans, please be sure. So there will be burned by missed field goal here with eight seconds to go and on the field by the West in. African drum and their ensemble, offensive as well as a end. Fun pass and kick competition. The dance team and a special right David Cunholm hopefully women's track and field will be able to athletes. fix the issues he had before missing the field goal earlier with this 36 yard attempt. As I mentioned, one for two last year. DJ Ellis was the primary kicker last year. Now David Prudholm taking over duties. So a solid drive for the Ithaca Bombers. Potentially ending with three points, pending the field goal. And a timeout again. Called by the Alfred Saxons. Two timeouts in a row. Clear that they were trying to ice the kicker there, but kind of bad foul. Lazarus Morgan, the defensive coordinator for the Alfred Saxons, is his second year. Second year as defensive coordinator for the Alfred Saxons. And back in his playing days, he was the starting defensive back for the Utica Pioneers. So he's very familiar with playing both the Alfred Saxons and Ithaca Bombers. Now he is the defensive coordinator of the Saxons. After the two timeouts, Ithaca Bombers hopefully will finally be able to get the kickoff. 36 yard attempt for David Prude home. 18 seconds to go. Uh, the kick is up. And through the uprights and good. 17-13 is the score. The score with just under four seconds to go. 17. Big drive for Ithaca and big way to kind of revive it. Just when you thought they were getting towards the end zone. A little they hit a little bit of a, a halt there, but were able to capitalize on that field goal. That was big. So very good drive by the Ithaca Bombers. Getting all the way downfield. Ending with the field goal by David Prudhomme, and this first half has been very positive coming into this game. You probably wouldn't have expected the 5-5 five and five Ithaca Bombers from last year to be leading the Alfred Saxons at halftime, but that's what we've seen so far. It's been a very competitive game, very evenly matched between these two teams. Well, again, we had mentioned the fact that Alfred had graduated 16 seniors last year, 8 on both sides of the ball. So they're they're kind of in transition too, just as much as this. Well, David Brudholm set to kick off for so Ithaca. far this New York Bombers team looking very good. Dan Swanson at the helm, Adam Fran under center. Now in the Liberty League, this is a non-conference matchup. First time since 1962 that this Ithaca Alfred matchup is a non-conference. Prudholm sends a line drive downfield. It bounces, fielded by Jaden Gavidia. And Gavidia fakes out a few bombers and gets to the 29-yard line before getting taken down. And that will be the first half. Jackson, what has stood out to you so far on both sides of the ball? I think that one of the big pieces that Alfred has uh, capitalized on is uh, running the ball. 
but at the same time, a couple of mistakes have haunted them. We saw that there were a couple of overthrows. We saw that one um, intended for a receiver on Ithaca's side of the ball that could have easily resulted in a touchdown. Of course, that missed extra point may very well come back to be um, an X factor if this game comes down to the wire which it is right now, only four points. Ithaca leading by four, 17-13. On Ithaca's side of the ball, what I really liked was uh, Fran's ability when he completed the passes was to was throwing the quick ones over the middle, throwing the quick ones to the side, the sharp ones that we saw Ithaca working on in practice. But I think he's got to work on a little bit more is um, the 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 screens, the, yes. short, the, the short lobs, the soft ones. Maybe he's worried a little bit about it being intercepted, so he's throwing it short. Maybe um, he thinks there's pressure there when there's not. Whatever the case may be, I'm sure that's something that's going to be um, of topic in the Ithaca locker room, and it should be interesting to see if he corrects that out of the half. The Ithaca defense was fine. Um, they had some great plays. We saw that big stop. Um, they had a couple drives to go uh, after the um, attempted onside kick by them. A lot of pressure on them on that one. I was a little shocked. It was six minutes left to play in the half. They did very well. They didn't allow. Um, they did not miss a beat. So um, I'll be looking at all those things in the second half. And with that, we'll be sending it to our men in the studio, Charlie Novak and Justin Ruzier. I'm Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts. You've been listening to Bombers Football here on VICRadio.org and the Bomber Radio Network. Welcome back to Ithaca Bombers Football here at Butterfield Stadium. They are taking down the 21st ranked Alfred Saxons. I'm Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts here for the second half of Bombers Football. The score is Ithaca 17, Alfred 13. The kick is off and returned by Jordan Shem. He gets to about the 30-yard line before getting out of bounds, and now Adam Front of the offense will take the field. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Hands it off to Isaiah DeHaney, who finds a hole and gets about a five-yard gain to the 35-yard line. Adam Prime gets the snap, looking for an option, and gets a two-yard gain to the about 37-yard line. It is now third and three. And now it's shotgun formation. For Adam Fran of the Bombers, two wide receivers to the left, one okay. to the right. Fran, hard count. Just welcome back to the audience if you want to recap. Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts here. Fran gets a snap, runs right, finds a hole, and he gets a first down and then some to about the 49 yard line. Adam Fran, mobile on his feet. Adam picking up where he left off last half. We saw him run the ball efficiently, especially with that. Long 50 yard touchdown. Run, run good for Ithaca. First down. So far, this drive, that's Adam, that's Ithaca's second first down of the drive, or first first down rather, and now it's Isaiah to Haiti taking it about five yards. Again, the score is 17 13 Bombers with about 13 and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. Second and seven. Fran gets a snap, hands it off to the Haiti, who gets eaten up behind the line of scrimmage. That was Toby Hale making the tackle. That's going to send him, like you said, back to about midfield. About three yards shy, I should say. And here they're in a position where they need to throw the ball. I don't think you can count on Fran running this time. they got four guys to the line, yet enough in the backfield. Fran from shotgun formation. Third down and eight after the loss of yardage. Fran gets a snap from shotgun, and he's eaten up in the backfield again, this time by Ty Timmerman. So great job by the Alfred defensive line to put up a stop here. Punting team comes onto the field. So Ty Timmerman and Toby Hale making big tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Ty Timmerman, a big force on this team, a senior, 210 pounds, so definitely always a presence to look for. Absolutely, not, not hard to miss him. 
And the punt from Minogue rolls into the end zone. Should say hard to miss him. It's a big dude, Ty Timmerman. So that will set up the Alfred Saxons at the 20 yard line after the punt rolled into the end zone. Bryce Morrison coming onto the field. No Wildcat business to start off this drive. Pistol formation for the Alfred Saxons. Tight end in motion for the Saxons. Morrison gets a snap, hands it off to a new running back this time. Number 27, haven't seen him all day. That is Nazir Smith, Nazir the freshman. Smith with the ball for Alfred. Now it is second and eight. Correction, Aaron Griffin on the carry. Pistol formation. Fakes the handoff and it goes to EJ Staniszewski. A very big presence on this offense. Tight end, 250 pounds. Don't see guys like that making receptions often. Well, we haven't seen much from him today uh, on the offensive side of the ball, doing his part in blocking, but it's good to see him um, pound his way through uh, for a couple of yards. Gets the first down there. And now, pistol formation for Bryce Morrison. Staniszewski in motion, handoff, goes to Malik, and he gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Good for a five-yard loss. Malik Fuentes on the carry. It's a great job by the Ithaca Bombers to crash the line of scrimmage and force Malik Fuentes backwards, taking him down after about a five-yard loss. Yeah, starting to figure him, uh, figure him out a little bit more uh, throughout this game. Less and less yards on each carry. Every once in a while, he'll... Uh, avoid some tackles and, and pound his way through, maybe get a first down or so, but more so now, you're starting to see Ithaca uh, pound the line of scrimmage and the backfield. Pistol formation for the Alfred Saxons here on second down and 15. Morrison fakes the snap and one of the linemen jumped. False start, that will be second and 20. So Bobby Morris Nailed for a false start there. That sends the Saxons backwards to the 22-yard line with 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Bryce Morrison in shotgun formation now. Six seconds left on the play clock, and Alfred just lined up. Morrison gets a snap. Mano gets blocked in the backfield, and the pass is complete to Rodney Etienne. Good pressure provided by Pat Minogue, and that will set up third down Morrison's and 12. complete to Rodney Etienne, touched up by Aaron Francis. So Pat Mano tried to crash from the right side of the line of scrimmage, but he was blocked in the backfield by an aware Aaron Griffin. Alfred, Shotgun down. formation for the Alfred Saxons. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Morrison gets the snap. Rolls left and nearly taken down. Stays on his feet somehow. Avoids the tackle and throws way downfield to Rodney Etienne, who could not pull it in. It was overthrown. A great job by Bryce Morrison staying up on his feet to keep that play alive. Yeah, Bryce Morrison evading a tackle from Boizos uh, right there on the defensive side for Ithaca. And he really got some room there to throw, but again, another overthrow for Alfred and granted good defense. Um, Monk on to downfield by Alfred, right Jordan Shem back to so Brian Gill would force him out of the pocket, then Dan Loisos chased him down to the sidelines. And Trevor Monk gets a low snap, punts it downfield, and Shem's going to get this one. Avoids an early tackle, running to the right sidelines, trying to get a block, trying to get past one more man, and he gets to the 42-yard line. 
in Ithaca's offensive territory. What more can I say about Jordan Shem as a punt returner? He's a preseason All-American for a reason. His returns like that, a good 15 yards or so on that punt return. We mentioned it before, quick feet, knows how to get rid of the, uh, get past some of those tackles. You've seen, you've seen him do it today. Perfect illustration on that punt return. return. Shotgun formation for the Ithaca Bombers. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Kendall Anderson in the backfield <laughs> alongside Adam Fron. Fron looking right. Quick throw to Will Gladney who drops the ball. Don't see that that often from Will Gladney. Typically the most sure-handed receiver on this Bombers team. And a storyline that we noticed when we went to practice is the camaraderie that Will Gladney and Adam Fron had. We talked to him about that and he said they spent the whole summer together working on throws and they're a solid duo now. Adam Fron in the shotgun formation. Kendall Anderson to his left. Fron gets a snap. Now he's looking left. Throws to Jared Bauer. His first catch all day. And breaks one tackle, but taken down behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a two-yard loss. Third down and 12 for the Ithaca Bombers. One of the things we mentioned before the end of the half was how Fron had had some trouble lobbing those screens. Well, now we start to see him put a little bit more zip on it. And as a result, it's working out in his favor. Unfortunately, a little bit of a loss in yardage there. Jared Bauer, a senior receiver. A reliable target for Wolfgang Schaefer last year. And that was the third receiver on this team. Third down and 12 for the Ithaca Bombers. They are at the 44-yard line in their offensive territory. J.R. Cesar in the backfield, perhaps some trickery. Cesar rolls out, takes the screen, and the throw is over Gladney's head. Incomplete, that will bring up fourth down, and the punt team will come onto the field. So a fake screen pass to a real screen pass to Will Gladney, but it's over his head. And that will be Alfred Ball pending the punt. Jaden Gavidia is back to return for Alfred. Jaden Gavidia has had a solid day returning punts. Pat Minogue lined up at about the 42-yard line in his own territory. Oh, the, the punt was blocked, and it rolls to the 30-yard line in Alfred territory. So... Ithaca gets bailed out there as Alfred does get a hand on the ball after the Minogue's punt. So Alfred's at their own 30-yard line to start off this drive. Score is 17-13. No score so far in the second half. 7.40 to go in the third quarter. Pistol formation with two running backs to the left and right of Bryce Morrison. And Morrison throws left. It's caught by Ronnie Etienne. Oh no, it's incomplete. Etienne is not happy about that call. Incomplete. Intended for Ronnie Etienne. And that was the back judge making that call of incomplete pass. Etienne really not happy with the call. Nevertheless, it is second and 10 from the 30 yard line for the Alfred Saxons. Shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons here on second and 10. Morrison gets a snap, fakes the throw, and he hands it off to Malik Fuentes, who gets a good eight yards in that carry. So they run an HB draw on that play. I think that's the first time we've seen that all day, Jackson. Yeah, it is something we haven't seen usually, and we're not accustomed to seeing from the Alfred offense. And look, if, look if it quacks like a duck, it did the trick right there. Yeah. Alfred, third, third down. down and two for the Alfred Saxons from their own 38-yard line. 
Wildcat formation. Malik Fuentes awaits the snap. He fumbled the snap last time. Malik Fuentes, the all E8 running back. Fuentes gets the ball and he, he gets enough yardage and then some. So a good five yard gain for Malik Fuentes from the Wildcat formation. 6.46 to go. First down, Alfred from the 45 yard line. So that time the wild card works out, or the wild cat rather, works out with Malik Fuentes getting the first down on the keeper. Pistol formation for Bryce Morrison and the Alfred Saxons. Morrison gets a snap, fakes the handoff, rolls right. Looking downfield, throws it to Chase Olivas, and he's taken down with a good 18 yard gain. Chance Olivas brings it to the 38-yard line. Yeah, so first down, Bombers. Go ahead. Olivas pounding his way through right there after the catch, getting some extra yardage, even though he was he was uh, approached by a couple of Bombers. Now pistol formation for Bryce Morrison and the Alfred Saxons. First and ten. And the handoff goes to Aaron Griffin. Oh, now that's Nazir Smith, rather, the freshman. And it's a first down, a good 10-yard gain for Nazir Smith. Now another pistol formation set up with Nazir Smith in the backfield. For the Alfred Saxons here on first and ten from the 25 yard line. And the handoff goes to Smith again. Smith throws a man down, but gets taken down by five bombers after Brad Helmkamp gets shoved to the ground. Very tough play by Nazir Smith. Under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Still, nobody has scored in this second half. 17-13 Bombers, I'm Dan Darty alongside Jackson Roberts. You are listening to Ithaca Bombers football here on VICRadio.org and the Bomber Radio Network. It's the season opener for the Ithaca Bombers, pistol formation for Bryce Morrison and the Saxons. Morrison, fakes the handoff again, rolls right, throwing downfield towards the end zone to Jaden Gavidia and knocked away by Jordan Shem. Jaden Gavidia nearly brought in the touchdown, but Jordan Shen was in the right place at the right time, gets his hand up and knocks it down. And Morrison looked like he was hurt on that play. It took him a minute or two uh, to get up. He needed some assistance right there from one of his teammates on the O-line. Casey Boston is the backup quarterback for the Alfred Saxons in case Morrison were to get hurt. Now, pistol formation again for the Alfred Saxons. It is first down and ten. There must be a penalty on the play. I it was rough in the passer. And the handoff goes to Fuentes, who gets taken down by Brian Gill. A good six yard gain for Malik Fuentes. And now Alfred is on the doorstep again. Six yard gain. Second and four. Pistol formation for Bryce Morrison and the Alfred Saxons. He gets a snap, hand off to Fuentes. And he's taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Dan Loizos and Brian Gill. Loizos, the leading tackler of the Bombers last year, stepping up big time on that play. By Dan Loizos and Brian Gill. Jackson looks like they're going to trust Malik Fuentes on this drive as the Wildcat formation is back on the field. It is, especially third down here. You know, Alfred maybe trying for a little uh, 
chicanery on their side, but we'll see what happens as they are in a position where they need to do something. Rather, it's a shotgun formation now, an empty backfield for Bryce Morrison. The quarterback, he throws right, and it is off the hands of EJ Staniszewski. Looks for his tight end security blanket, and Staniszewski could not bring it in. Terrible job, terrible job by Alfred right there. Just terrible execution, couldn't even get the pass off. Morrison looked confused. They didn't, you know, we, we saw them in the Wildcat a second ago. Now they shifted to a shotgun formation. They looked totally confused and had no idea what they were doing. And now it's a field goal for Alfred. Trevor Monk, the kick is up, and it is no good. Wide right. So a big missed field goal for Trevor Monk. And now it's Ithaca ball, 17-13 is the score. Make, make no mistake about this, Danny. Ithaca has done a great job on defense. They've capitalized when they need to. They've made some stops. They've, they've pounded the line. But Alfred's really making their own bed with their mistakes. They've now missed a couple of field goals. They missed some throws. This is in no way any shape or form again. We were, we were curious about this. This is no way reminiscent of the offense last year. Absolutely. Last year, 20-6 to six was the final score as Alfred stomped to get the Bombers. This uh, Trevor Monk, 11 of 17 last year for field goals. Today, he's missed an extra point. And now that field goal. So it's 0 for 1 to start the season from field goal range. And now shotgun formation for the Bombers starting at the 20-yard line. Pistol formation, snap from Fran. Fran fakes the option and gets hit at the line of scrimmage. And taken down quickly, so second down and still 10. Now Adam Fran lines up in shotgun formation, two wide receivers each way. Isaiah to Haiti to his left. Adam Fran gets the snap, hands it off to the Haiti, looking for a hole, and he's taken down by a group of Alfred Saxons. Looks like Cole Reed got there first, the middle linebacker. We've seen the draw quite a bit today from Ithaca mm -hmm. between Fran and D. Haiti. He's working out sometimes, but Alfred's starting to pick up on that. Especially uh, Kohler on the offense, the defensive line. And now on third down, Fran rolls left and finds J.R. Cesaro for the first down. A nice sliding grab by J.R. Cesaro. Cesaro, former member of the D1 Buffalo team, transferred over to Ithaca. Now he's one of the primary wide receivers. Adam Fran fakes the handoff, takes it himself, finds a hole in the middle, and gets a good nine-yard gain. Adam Fran, very mobile. That's a great sign for this Ithaca offense. Very versatile. We didn't see as much of this in practice with some working more on the, uh, the throws, but it's good to see him um, put both into practice during the game. Absolutely. So this is a very well-oiled machine on offense. Credit to Dan Swasham, who is taking over the play calling duties as well as a head coach. As we mentioned, former offensive coordinator at Johns Hopkins at D1 School. Shotgun formation, three RBC results to the right. Adam Fran awaits a snap on second and one. Fran looking downfield and checks down right and wow, nearly intercepted. A diving play by AJ Lakata on the coverage for Alfred. He was outstretching that one to knock away the screen pass to Will Gladney. Great play by Lakata. Gladney could have and would have probably gotten a couple more yards on that and he, he caught it. QB sneak for Adam Fran and it looks like got stopped. Ithaca was rushing there on that last play to get to the line. Fran pummels ahead for Ithaca. It. Will Gladney says first down. Referees say fourth down. From this perspective, it looks like it's going to be a fourth down in inches. It will be. But Adam Fraun tries a QB sneak there, gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. The chains come out. We could be wrong here. 
It'll be a fourth and inch. inches. Fourth and inches. Wow, that is as close as it gets, though. That really is as close as it gets. And Ithaca's got an interesting decision here. You're about to enter the fourth quarter. You're up by four. The question now becomes, what do you do? And I think the question's been answered. The question has been answered. Offense stays on the field. Adam Fraun under center again. Will he go with the QB sneak? Isaiah Haiti in the backfield. Thirty-three seconds to go, and the clock is ticking. Adam Fraun gets a signal. Plenty of time on the play clock. High formation. And Fraun does get it this time. First down, Bombers. Most likely will take them to the end of the quarter. First down, So fourth down. Last year, the Bombers were six for seventeen. That's good for thirty-five percent. They're going to wait it out. They make the fourth down conversion here. And as you mentioned, they will run out the clock for this third quarter. Going into the fourth quarter with a four-point lead, 17-13. Bombers lead the 21st-ranked Alfred Saxons. The score at the end of the third quarter. So a solid Indica, quarter of football. No Alfred points scored, 13. but each offense got their licks in and got downfield. So. What still had you in that third quarter? Despite no points being scored, maybe an offensive player that has been playing well so far. Well, I look at uh, AJ Licata starting to emerge. We saw that big play he made, that tip on Gladney. This is the point of the game where the stars really have to rise and shine. And maybe that's what you're starting to see from him. He's been, like like I said before, he's been mostly silent throughout this game. Maybe this is a, uh, a sign that he's starting to turn things around and kind of get up on the high horse and ride it. And the Ithaca offense moving pretty well that time, but I believe Alfred had the better quarter offensively. Malik Fuentes looked excellent running the ball that quarter, as well as Nazir Smith. Yeah, he did. And they, they what was interesting, Danny, was that they mixed it up a little bit. Smith and Fuentes both. It was more uh, Fuentes in the first quarter. Now there's a bit of a variation, and that could play to their advantage as they go forward, especially when you have both of them on the field at the same time. Absolutely. Fresh legs, at least late in the game. A very close game, too. And now starting out this fourth quarter from the 44-yard line, their own 44-yard line of the Ithaca Bombers, first and 10. Adam Fraun looks left, rolls right, pressured, and he Gets to the line of scrimmage, probably passed it, so he runs out of bounds, pushed out of bounds by Lakata, and he has to jump over the bench. Fraun scrambles, forced out by AJ Lakata. Yeah, he, he, he had to hurdle over that that, uh, that bench right there, the obstacle. Athletic the play by Adam Fraun. Very much so. You know, we always talk about what it's like to be pushed out of bounds. Well, it's one thing when you got your teammates and other players there. It's another thing when you got a hard object yeah. or obstacle in your way, such as a bench, a metal Absolutely. bench. So now on second and ten, Adam Fraun hands it off to the Haiti and looks like there was a little miscommunication on the handoff. It didn't look very clean. So the Haiti gets about a two-yard gain, or three-yard gain, rather. Third down and seven. Adam Fraun, shotgun. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. And he's going to take it himself again. Can he get to the first down marker? He's tripped up by A.J. Licata. This is questioning to me, Danny, because here he is at midfield, third down, starting to pass the ball a little bit better. Yes, that that could have been a bit of a confidence killer in what was almost picked off um, the, the, the pass to um, uh, Gladney that was. Mm -hmm. But he's starting to pass the ball a little bit better, and I'm shocked that he ran it there. I think he's getting more, a lot more confident in his feet in this game with a 52-yard touchdown. So now Pat Minogue lines up for the punt. And it goes downfield. Doesn't get much distance, though. But it will get to the 22-yard line. So Solid field, for, uh, field position for the Alfred Saxons. And it is 17-13 Bombers with under 13 and a half minutes to go. 
here in the Ladies final quarter this of the season opener. Brought to us by CMCU, a preferred partner of Ithaca College Athletics. So the Alfred Saxons, after failing last time on offense, getting all the way downfield, missing the field goal. They try again this time from their own 22-yard line. Pistol formation for the Alfred Saxons. Morrison gets the snap, looking right. Finds the open man, and it is caught by Jaden Gavidia. He's forced out of bounds by Pat Minot. A very good 20-yard gain for Jaden Gavidia. More than 20 yards. Fans, make sure to check back on athletics.ithaca.edu. Alfred now sets up first and 10. Or they correct the spot now. It's first and 10 from the 44-yard line. And the chains have stayed in the same place. And, yeah, the referees need to sort this out. First and 10 from the 44-yard line. Alfred approaching midfield. They're down by four. Bryce Morrison looks over to the sideline. He hands it off to the backup running back, Aaron Griffin, who gets tackled at the line of scrimmage. Hand off to Aaron Griffin, tackled me by Gaetano Rapicki and Dan Loizos. So notice one thing on Alfred's sidelines, the pre-snap play calls is they just raise a sequence of colors, of big sheets of color. And I have noticed that. That's been going on for almost the entire game. Could be, like you said, some type of signal. Yep. <coughs> Morrison from the pistol formation gets the snap. He's looking left. He throws left, and it is out of the hands of Jaden Gavidia. Gavidia went up to get that one, but it went through his hands. Aaron Francis on the coverage. Yeah, Gavidia, as we know, not the tallest guy, but he does have great hops, was able to get up, not just just not enough. Gavidia right stands five foot nine. Not a very big guy. Got up there. But has shown a lot of strength. Absolutely. He's been a Alfred third He's been down. Morrison's primary target in this game. Shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons. It's third and eight from the 47-yard line. Morrison throwing right to Gavidia, and there's no flag. There was a, is there a flag? Looks like there's gonna be a, it'll oh. probably be a pass interference, it looks like. There was a flag, it was hidden by one of the bombers on the sideline, Daly. so I can see it. Daly uh, the pass interference. Rob Daly gets nailed for pass interference. That's a first down for the bombers. There's a lot of contact on the play. That's a big penalty, Danny. We, we we see the Bombers, they could take control, they could milk a little bit of the clock here. No, but instead, Alfred continuing this drive and in potential, in, you know, moving along, potentially have a position, put themselves in a position where they could score. They got down this far last time to the red zone too, but a field goal was missed and handoff goes to Malik Fuentes. He avoids one tackle, a couple flags throw in. It's a good five yard gain from Malik Fuentes, but Looks like it's coming back. Maybe a holding. That it is. Yeah, you can see the disappointment from the offensive lineman on Alfred. Wow, so double hold there. Yeah. I and mean, that's that's big. So Bobby Morris and Jake Toomey both getting nailed for holding calls. Only one counts, and that sends him back 10 yards. First down and 20 and 20 for the Alfred Saxons from their from Ithaca's 48-yard line. Morrison gets a snap, looks right. Rodney Etienne hangs onto the ball. Looks like he had trouble catching it. Morrison's fans brought in for a, about an eight yard gain. Second and 12 now for the Bombers after Etienne's catch. Second and 14, 11.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Alfred trails by four. Both teams really milked the clock in the third quarter and proceeded to do the same here in the fourth. Of course, penalties 
are holding both back. That is true shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons. Morris and Josh Beck throws to Rodney Etienne. It's off his hands and incomplete. Morrison's pass incomplete intended for Rodney Etienne. Aaron Francis and Kenny Bradley on the coverage. Third and 12 from the 42-yard line. Etienne and Gavidia, two of Morrison's most Alfred, reliable receivers today. Down. Targets, guys. He's looking to go to in positions like this. It's kind of incumbent that they haul those balls in. Yeah. They've been going through their hands recently, you're right. Shotgun formation. Last time they were able to convert thanks to a pass interference. Morrison gets a snap, looks left, over the middle, it's Rodney Etienne and he's hit by Jordan Shem before he can get to the first down marker. And will the offense stay on the field? Or will they attempt a field goal? Remember, they've missed the last two. That is right. Clock is running. This is about fourth and five from the 33-yard line. And the offense is staying on the field. I guess not the worst thing when you consider that, again, they've missed the last two field goals. Have some faith in your offense. Maybe stir something up. We've there one for two today on fourth down conversions. Empty backfield for Bryce Morrison. Morrison gets a snap. Pocket collapses. The throw is up and it is caught. Jaden Gavidia over the middle. And Morrison was hit hard. He's slow to get up again. Morrison's been taking some hits in this second half. But great job. As you said, pocket was collapsing. The world kind of was falling down on, his, um, on him right there. But able to just get one off right before he was hit. So Gavidia making the play, converting the fourth down. It's Wildcat after Bryce Morrison hobbles off to, to the sidelines. Malik Fuentes awaits the snap from Wildcat. Man in motion. Fuentes gets a snap. He rolls left. He's running. He gets taken down after about a three. Ball's on the ground. And it's going to stay with Alfred. It's as if the play was dead before the ball got loose. That's what maybe the excitement was about for Mythica. Mm -hmm. Let's see Morrison back on the field now. It's good when they have those options, when Fuentes can be in the Wildcat, when he can take control, give more sense of breathing room on those big hits. Absolutely. And that's about second and eight from the 23-yard line. And Morrison gets a snap, rolls right. He's pressured by Brian Gill, avoids that sack. He's rolling left now, has a lane, and gets hit hard. Morrison's Rod Daly with the tackle. Brought down by Rod Daly and, and he's brought Reddit. down just before the first down marker. So great run by Bryce Morrison. We've seen some mobile quarterbacks today. I'll tell you something too, Danny. Merlin Thomas looked like he had a big block, if not for that, as Morrison was starting to cut the other way and and uh, arc back around towards the left side of the field. He may have been taken down in the backfield. That's the fullback for Alfred Merlin Thomas, and Ithaca chose to eliminate the fullback position. So. Alfred's fullback coming up big there. Wildcat formation for the Alfred Saxons on third and one. Malik Fuentes gets the play call. Two seconds left on the play clock. Can they get it off? And he does. Oh, the flag is on the play. They're going to call delay of game. Big call. Coach is arguing. Head coach for Alfred is Bob Rankle. Bob is Rankle is living here on the side. Bob Rankel has been the head coach of Alfred since 2014. That is a delay of game. That will send him back five yards, setting up third and six. Back in his playing days, Bob Rankel was starting defensive lineman for Ursinus. He's been with this team for a while, 15th year um, as a coach. Of course, a lot of time spent uh, as a defensive, or excuse me, an assistant coach. Yes. Now it's an empty backfield on third and six for Bryce Morrison. Morrison gets the snap, looks right, throws right, and it is caught again. Flag on the play. 
Ronnie Etienne gets the first down, but we'll have to wait to see what the penalty is. Ineligible man downfield for the Alfred Saxons. That will send them backwards again. And Danny, here the world is just falling out from underneath the Saxons. Two big penalties, third and inch, third and one. Now they're going to be back third and ten. And this is even more of an interesting situation because we talk about the missed field goals before. What do they do if they don't convert here? Eight minutes left in the fourth quarter as Alfred lines up in the shotgun formation after that penalty. Alfred, third down. Morrison gets a snap. Throws left. It's Gavidia. He catches it and scores. Touchdown, Alfred Saxons. As Jaden Gavidia gets the touchdown on the left side of the field. Great pass and catch by Gavidia. Wow, what a play right there. Just when they needed to. I'm telling you, if they win, that might be the play of the game right there. Absolutely. A big play, third and ten after two big penalties that had set them back. Gavidia has been alongside with... Um, um, a couple of others, his go-to guy for the day. Perfect pass and great execution. Absolutely, Jane Gavidia puts the Saxons up and the kick is up and good. The extra point is good. It is now 20 to 17, Alfred. Alfred 20, Ithaca 17. So a three-point game, it's only one possession. Jaden Gavidia stepping up big time for the Alfred Sachs in that play and beautiful throw from Bryce Morrison. Now you said it, what a great throw, placed it perfectly and he was well covered. Gavidia was covered on that play, but he was able to reach out, get it, corral it, and most importantly, keep mo uh, excuse me, both feet in. Absolutely. In Ladies and gentlemen, this bomb he was shoved late on the run, but shoved into the end zone. And now the tables turn here as Ithaca's going to have the pressure on them. This is what's interesting to me also with Fran, seeing him when he's down, seeing him having to manufacture a drive, being on the other end of the scoreboard. So he's getting a little bit of everything in this game. Trevor Monk lines up to kick it off. And not a very far kick as it's over Brad Helmkamp's head and Anthony Capozzi is whistled down. Capozzi picks it up at the 20 yard line and that is where Ithaca will start their drive. They're down by three. Under eight minutes to go, 7.50. Bombers down by three. Alfred ranked 21st in the nation. This is a case where if you're Ithaca, you want to do everything as quickly as possible so that way you can hope your defense makes a stop again, put yourself in a position to get some more insurance points. Shotgun formation for Adam Fran and the Bombers. Two wide receivers each way. Isaiah to Haiti to the left of Fran. Fran gets a snap. Hands off to Haiti. Oh, no, he keeps it. It's an option and hit by AJ Lakeda in the backfield. As you mentioned, he is stepping up big time late in this game. There we go. The more that, you know, with. With, with, with A.J. Licata, we're seeing this quiet as the game started. After the first half, he has been a difference maker for this team. And there's, I believe, his first sack of the day. And now it's second and 12. Zazara, Zazara waving seems, towards the sideline. Seems to be barking over there. Seems very confused. So confusion from, pre-play confusion for the Bombers, but... They're in the pistol formation. Fran gets a snap. It's an option. He hands it off to Kendall Anderson, who gets a good four-yard gain. That will set up third and eight. Cesar is still yelling at the sidelines. We got a miscue over there from the sidelines, or misdirection of what was originally the plan. Again, shotgun formation. This will be a big three and out if Alfred can come up with the stop. Third and eight. Jack Ewell in motion. Adam Fran. Over the middle. It's Will Gladney. Easy pass. Can he get to the first down marker? And he does, and then some. A big game to get to the 38 yard line for Will Gladney. 
on the short pass over the middle. Coming up big there is Will Gladney again. Huge play, especially after a couple of drop, or especially after that uh, drop pass on the last drive by Gladney. Good to see him recover. Good to see him get that yardage after completion. Hurry up offense for the Bombers as they're in the shotgun formation again. One wide receiver to the left, two to the right. Jack Yule next to the offensive line on the left side. Hands off to Kendall Anderson, who is eaten up at the line of scrimmage by plenty of Alfred Saxons. Handle to Kendall Anderson. Biggest difference maker being Damon Neal. 6'3", 260 as the defensive tackle. Shotgun formation again. Second down. 5.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. One to the left. Two wide receivers to the right. Was Snap goes to front. He keeps it himself after the fake. And it looks like he's going to get the first down. It steps out of bounds. A perfect play for Adam Fron. How about Adam Fron's feet today? Oh, it has been incredible to watch him play. The way he has. Very versatile, as we've mentioned before. And Alfred really having a, a lot of trouble adjusting and, and reading the uh, play actions and then the fakes. Mm -hmm. That quarterback option has been great today for the Bombers. Shotgun formation again, first and down from midfield, first and ten rather, from midfield. Adam Fron gets a snap. He's going to hand it off this time to Isaiah DeHaney, who tries to break a tackle and pushes forward to about a five-yard gain to the 45-yard line. Tackled by John They're in Alfred's own end. I think it's interesting, Danny. The the tone of the drive has changed now. I think once it got under five minutes to play here, it went from hurry up to now try and milk the clock enough, where you can, um, where you can score within maybe a minute remaining. Shotgun formation for the Bombers. They're down by three at the 45-yard line. Fran gets a snap. The blitz is coming. A huge block in the pass was over the middle and it was incomplete. Eric Graham tried to jump the route and get the intercession but could not reach the ball. Pass intended for Will Gladney. Adam Fron just did not put enough on it. And Greer coming out of nowhere there. It looks like he was Eric diving Graham across the field. He almost had that ball too. Good read by him as Fron was getting set to throw. Adam Fron from shotgun formation now. Fake to Isaiah to Haiti. Fron rolls left and. He gets knocked out behind the line of scrimmage. Fron keeps it himself, forced out by Kyle Moore. I think you, I think you go for it here. Four, t uh, four ten left in the game. You know how strong Alfred's running game is. They're going to milk the clock. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of how much they will. I think the question now becomes, what do you do? You're ob you obviously have to pass here. You can't run the ball if you're Fron. It's fourth and ten. Fourth and ten for Adam Fron. That's the confidence in his feet we talked about running a hat or QB option on third down and long. Two wide receivers each way. Zach Raymond in the backfield. Fron drops back. Looking downfield. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's running all the way back. A referee falls down. Throws way downfield. Can he get to Cesaro? He brings it in. Oh, and he's way out of bounds. Out of bounds. Cesaro Cesar is not happy with that call. He goes to the sidelines yelling and screaming. Throwing the ball down right by the ref's foot. They turn over on downs. Ball. It looks like he did get a foot down. At the 50 yard line. And of course, remember all, all the folks out there who may be confused in college, one foot inbounds is required, unlike the NFL, where both feet are. Big difference. Huge difference on that play. And I agree with you, Danny. It did look like from our vantage point, although the refs can see it much better than we can, it looked like he may have gotten a foot down. So now Alfred starts with the ball. Three and a half minutes to go at midfield. Wildcat formation. Expect to see this a lot as Fuentes and gang try to milk the clock. I think you get one more first down here and you're home free if you keep running the ball well. 
Let's see what happens. It's a three yard gain on first down there. Check out athletics.ithaca.edu for the latest news, scores, and videos from Ithaca College. Follow all our social So, a couple of secondary players the for the Bombers come off the field to bring in more big guys to stack the line. A huge presence on the defensive line for the Ithaca Bombers here. Malik Fuentes from the Wildcat formation. Second and seven from the 47 yard line. And the whistle's blown immediately. Flag. And it's going to be a delay of game. Malik Fuentes gets nailed with the delay of game again. That's the second time this happened this, to him. This really is just something you cannot afford if you're Alfred to do right now. You you can't afford any setbacks. You can't afford any stoppages uh, in the clock right here, allowing Ithaca to regroup. You got to be penalty. This is this is the part of the game that is most crucial to be penalty free. So Orifri did throw a flag, but the correction was that Alfred did call a timeout before the flag was thrown. So. It will remain second and seven from Ithaca's 48-yard line. Now it's going to be most likely Wildcat from here on out for the Alfred Saxons. And, you know, again, thankfully they were able to um, call the timeout right before the penalty was called, thus uh, negating it. But you hope that they stay, again, penalty-free from here on out. That's a second... Uh, that's the first time out, rather, used by either team in the second half. Wildcat again. Fuentes gets a snap, hands it off to Aaron Griffin. Griffin, looking for a hole. Gets hit hard by Dan Loizos and taken down with four yards to go. It's third down and four. Timeout called by the Ithaca Bombers. And you see Griffin coming across right as, the, right as they were snapping the ball. I think that was a clear indication that he was going to get it, but the Bombers just are having a little bit of trouble reading it because of the unpredictability that Malik Fuente, or Fuentes will bring to the table. By checking in at all Bombers sporting events this fall. This will be probably the biggest play of the game for the Ithaca Bombers here. Third down and four to go for the Alfred Saxons. Two and a half minutes left. Bombers down by three. And of course, if Alfred manages to get within a couple inches of a first down, that will then become the biggest play of the game for Ithaca. But right now, you're, you, you're clearly right. It is a crucial play for Ithaca. they got to make a stop. Alfred is at a point of the field where they cannot kick a field goal. I mean, even if they were 10 yards closer to the end zone, 20 yards maybe, then you could start to think about it with the way they've kicked today. But they just have been very inconsistent. I think it's, again, very incumbent upon them that they get this first down because the fourth down is really going to put you in a tough position if you give Ithaca that field position going forward where they are now. And Bryce Morrison back on the field. Shotgun formation for the Alfred Saxons. No more Wildcat. Third down and four from the 44-yard line. Morrison hands off to Fuentes. Can he get to the first down marker? And he does! That'll do it. Pat Minogue and Kenny Bradley bring him down, but not before he gets to the first down marker. Of course, you can't predict football, but I'll tell you this, that is a clear indication that Alfred has things working for them. With two minutes and 30 seconds left to go, and a whole nother drive ahead of them. So it looks like an HB draw on that play, as Morrison looks for a pass downfield and handed off quickly to Malik Fuentes, who found the hole, bounced outside the offensive line, and got to the first down marker, and then some. Ball is now at the 35-yard line for the Alfred Saxons. Now with the timeout here. You got to bring the pressure on the line here if you're at the go. They haven't blitzed too much today, but that's kind of the key to stopping these runs that are unpredictable. You know that they're confined to those at times. Obviously, Morrison has shown the ability to find guys like Etni and Gavidia, but if they're in a position here where they need to milk the clock and run, you got to put as much pressure on them as you can. So one timeout left for the Ithaca Bombers. Wildcat formation on first and 10 for the 35-yard line. Aaron Griffin comes across, gets the handoff on the wide receiver reverse, and he is taken down quickly, about a one-yard gain. Ithaca decides to keep their timeout. Let's see if Ithaca use their timeout. Pat Minogue leading the charge on the tackle. Clock is running. 
second and nine. We're approaching the two-minute warning. I mean, college will be won right through the two-minute warning, but now there's under two minutes to go. Wildcat formation. Thirty-four yard line, second and nine. Fuentes gets it, takes the handoff, runs straight ahead, and he gets a lot of yardage. Within the chains, though, looks like a good five-yard gain. Maybe even more to set up third and two. Again, they're keeping their timeout. 120 remaining on the clock. This is always an interesting call because you have a timeout left and you're a field goal away from tying the game, but they, there comes a point where you just gotta stop the clock. Fuentes. Awaits a snap from Wildcat formation. Fakes the wide receiver reverse. Fuentes trying to find a hole and he does not. Pat Minogue stops him in the backfield alongside Kenny Bradley. Uses their timeout it's perfect time to use your timeout if you're Ithaca Absolutely. fourth down. This is where, if they didn't, Alfred would milk the clock as much as they could. Mm -hmm. So great time management by Dan Swanstrom and the Ithaca Bombers team. J.R. Zazar is still living on the sidelines, walking around with his helmet off. He wanted that call really bad, but could not get it. There is now 52 seconds remaining. In the fourth quarter, it's a three-point game. Not much yards to go here for the Alfred Saxons. It's about fourth and one from the 27-yard line. Will Alfred keep their offense on the field? And they do. This I think you have to here. It's, it's bold, you're right, but I don't really think they have another choice. I mean, they've been very inconsistent with field goals, and you're clearly not going to punt the ball um, this close to the red zone. So this is it. Biggest play of the game here. Shotgun formation for Bryce Morrison and the Saxons. Can Ithaca come up with a stop? Fuentes in motion. He hands off to Fuentes. Fuentes looking for the first down marker, and he does not get it. Turnover on downs. Ithaca will have 45 seconds to get to field goal range. A huge play by the front seven of Ithaca here to stop Fuentes on the reverse. That it is. And Ithaca's got to move the ball quickly here. This is where Fran really has to get into his passing element right now. He can't be running the ball. And if you are, you got to make sure you get out of bounds. And that's the tricky thing. He was able to do that once last drive. But that he was. Not consistently. And of course, that doesn't become the goal at this. That 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 becomes the goal at this point in the game, or mm -hmm. wasn't earlier. So they set up in the shotgun formation, first and ten from the 25-yard line. It goes down by three. They just need to get the field goal range. Fran rolls right, throws right, and it's intercepted. Picked off, and that will do it. Kyle Moore steps up big time and Ithaca will go on to lose their home opener the first time they've lost the season opener in 19 years so Kyle Moore jumps the route on the first play of the huge drive Thirty-eight seconds left, and Alfred will just ice the game. A very close game this was, and that will do it. Morrison kneels, and the clock will wind down. Not much to hang your head on, though, for Ithaca. It was a very hard-fought game against a ranked opponent early on in the season. No, you're right. Uh, it was a game down to the wire. Ithaca had the lead for most of this game. Fran, obviously a different quarterback when you're facing a deficit for the first time in your college career as a starter. And this was an even more difficult task, this drive, having to um, 
put together a um, put together a quality drive to get yourself into, into field goal range, and it's tough to do. We Alfred saw 20, how much Fans, pressure it put on this team, game. and sure look, things are going to happen. You're susceptible to mistakes, especially when it's your first play in this high pressure of an environment and situation. I should say. So Jaden Gavidia's touchdown late in the game proves to be the game winner as the Alfred Saxons win by three, 20 to 17 in their season opener. So Adam Fon looked solid. We could not come up with a huge drive at the end to tie the game. And this will be the next time you'll hear football on VIC Radio. Next time will be in three weeks or about four weeks maybe because there will be two away games and then a bye week for the Bombers coming up before they return home. So Bombers, as you said, yeah, they're going on the road. Some big games. They're, they got Utica. They got Rochester, Buffalo State. Buffalo State's the big one who they have played in the past. But again, this year, totally different when it is an interdivision game. Yep, Liberty League now for the Utica Bombers is they go down to open up their season 20 to 17, the final score against 21st ranked Alfred for Jackson Roberts and our halftime crew of Charlie Novak, Justin Ruzier, TV radio operations director Jeremy Menard, uh, for Emma Beltrandi, our sports director for the Bomber Radio Network. I'm Dan Darty, and thank you for listening to If the Bombers Football today here on VICRadio.org and the Bomber Radio Network.